We had, had a GameCube, and that was supposed to make us be okay. Uh, GameCube. We were like, you have the GameCube, you'll be fine. And I'm like, how many times can I play Mario Sunshine? I want to yeah. play San Andreas. I'm yeah, 10. GTA, I don't yeah. care. I want to yeah. kill a hooker with a katana. <laughs> that urge never goes away if you don't satisfy it at 10. Yo, if you have a kid out there, make sure he's playing as many violent video games as he can before puberty. Bye. Otherwise, Bye, those son. wires get crossed and he ends up in the NFL. <laughs> <laughs> Tickets are on sale for KFC Radio Live. Click the link in the bio. Get yours. Come out and hang with the boys. What's up? Everybody. What's up, man? I feel like this I never went to college. It's the closest thing I had to a frat <laughs> party. Thanks so much for having me, dude. Hell yeah, this looks like the room I got molested in. <laughs> <laughs> and with Goldeneye. That's what was on in the background. I just kept looking at the squares. <laughs> it was great. Oh Two my things died God. that day. My uh, character and my innocence. This is great. This is so cozy. I do my podcast in like a rented office. Yeah, well, I, we, we, went <laughs> we, we went through those days too. I love this. We went through those days. It was nice to finally get like a, a home so base. Cool. Yeah. It, it's so cool. It's But like, it's also one of those things like on camera, it looks nice. And then on the other... It's like shit everywhere. But like a, you said, it's a frat basement. Yeah, yeah. this is great. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm a 40 year old man, so maybe, <laughs> maybe it shouldn't be a frat basement for me. I'm just gonna be covering but. my drink like this the whole time, just because I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm Troy, by the way. Hi, I came in hot. Nice to meet you. Oh, I love it, man. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, never went to college, huh? You're just doing comedy. I mean, never. I started yeah. doing comedy. Uh, yeah, when I was 17. Uh, now, when just, you say that, though, like you were, you were. Out, in high out. school yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you're like you know um, open mics like trying to yeah, no, make I, money I'm, doing it I'm like, from Connecticut and okay. I used I hate to hate you already yeah I know it's, <laughs> I'm sorry um, I, I moved out I started doing mics when I was 17 I would leave school on like Friday afternoon i had a very high 1.0 gpa so like, it, was, it did not matter at that point the yeah. guy who's like in charge of telling me i have to go to college sat me down in his office and was like listen bud college isn't for everybody <laughs> sometimes i wish i didn't go because i got a hundred thousand dollars in student debt and my Look wife me. hates me and uh, anyway don't worry about this whole school bullshit so i was like you know all what? right i'm just going yeah not wrong like, right before my senior year i went to uh taping of fallon and i just screamed at him to pick me in the audience when they were doing this interview segment. And then I went home, saw myself on TV, and I was like, yeah, I could do this. I just wow. started going what, to mics. What was the, the Jimmy Fallon? It was thing? called Freestyling with the Roots. Okay. And they had, um, yeah, it was like right when the Royal Baby was born. And the game was like, they would ask the audience, he would ask like individual audience members questions, and the Roots would make a song based on it. And he right. was like, the Royal Baby was just born. What would you name the baby? And I was like, Prince Lucifer. And <laughs> the Roots like freaked out. They made a song. I went home. So I'm, I made it back home in time to watch it live. And I was mm -hmm. like, holy shit, I'm on TV. Yeah. I could do this like for real. And then yeah. like after that, it was horrible. I was on backstage and like there was, I would do anything I could to get on NBC. There was like a Today Show thing. I was on the Today Show like six times, like <laughs> for world record break. Like one, they did a thing like the world's largest exercise ball class. I went to the plaza at like six in the morning on an exercise ball. I had to pee so bad and they wouldn't let anybody pee. And like, I just saw the back of Carson Daly's head all day and the back of Al Roker's head, like right when he had one of his surgeries. So like his head was talking the back of it at the same time he was, it was so weird. Uh, and <laughs> I did this thing where like they they they, they shaved like your head for cancer uh for, like give you cancer the money went to cancer <laughs> yeah did yeah, that yeah. like all that and i was like going just doing mike sleeping on the train and then i graduated uh not supposed to graduate i got caught cheating on my final exam and they were nice. like you got to do summer school and i was like ah oh, fuck that's not happening and i paid some guy online because it was online summer school i'm a double cheat paid him to do it. i double cheat i was like i haven't learned a thing <laughs> um, and then uh i got him to do the the online summer school i got a job at the empire state building i dressed up like king kong for five years and took pictures with the tourists at the Empire State no, yeah, Building. Like, oh, Wait, was, was my that, real job, was, full time. Was that an Empire State? You were an Empire State Building employee? Empire you, State Building independent employee contractor. had a blue badge, which meant I was technically a supervisor. It was a two-man team, what, me and another guy. What years were you there? 2014 to 2019. I quit right before COVID started, because I was like, this feels like a good time to start doing comedy. <laughs> and Dude, I, I it was there. I don't the, remember we told, seeing, we, you were on the street. We did not work very hard. Um, <laughs> we were supposed to go out once an hour every for 30 minutes and 
I stole so much time from that company. <laughs> we would go out like once in the, every other hour for 10 minutes, go back in the room and be like, this is cutting in our Avengers time. I was downloading <laughs> movies on Pirate Bay and watching them with my partner. We were hammered all the time. Uh, I, got, I don't think my father was, <laughs> my father used to run the Empire State Building, but I don't think it was those years. Yeah. But I, I'm I sure lived, he probably had to deal with when like, I came the entertainers in, and the people, Oh, yeah, yeah, so. yeah. The guy who I'm sure my dad was coming home and this fucking kid's drunk at <laughs> There was these two guys who did it for a long time. Uh, they were, uh, one of them left. The other one was kind of a psycho. Uh, he flipped out on me like my third week there. He like threw the gorilla feet. He was he, like, we got out of the, 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 we went back in the room and he was like throwing pieces of the costume at me one at a time. And like <laughs> guests were complaining and they were like, we think there's domestic violence going on in the King Kong room. And then, then the crazy thing is after that, we didn't, t we shared a tiny little office together where we changed and we spent eight, nine hours a day with each other. Oh. After he threw all that shit at me, he didn't speak to me for four months. <laughs> did not say a single word to me the absolute most hostile word oh my god world. like it's so serious for monkey business and like it was insane and then they fired him and i got a job and then they hired this other guy to come work with me and we became best friends uh and then he stopped talking to me like two years ago and now he's blowing up on tiktok and i'm going to get my hair cut because his hair is long and he looks like a little girl <laughs> And uh, brother, let me tell you something. Fuck him. You Sorry, I'm Troy, by the, the way. I just came in. I'm not even on Adderall anymore. This is say, just me. I just, just got back from camp and I'm on the ledge. I, was, I had an extra large coffee and I was just talking to Caroline for 20 minutes. So, like, I'm on edge. I don't even know if we're recording. Ripping, yeah. This is just me at home. I feel like Kramer right now. What's going on, buddy? Yeah. <laughs> so, what's the name of this show? <laughs> what's up? I'm ready. Sorry. I love it. I fucking love it, man. Thanks I for mean, having this me. This is kind of what I expected. Sorry. Yeah, I, I I just, mean, what, what what jumped out at me is I've seen a, a, I think a good amount now of you just absolutely just screaming at hecklers <laughs> like not even like the typical like he eviscerates the heckler <laughs> just you being like shut the fuck up <laughs> I fucking hate you yeah. it's funny because like I, I was talking to somebody uh, and, and they were like I watch your, your videos and like you're not defensive you're just mad and i'm like i'm not even mad i'm just like stop talking yeah, there's yeah, one yeah. person just who has a microphone which happens all the time like there's yeah. especially people don't realize and when they go to live shows if you're doing a good job it's an intimate experience and people just feel like they can just sort of reach across because yeah. it's not like tv um and the thing that you don't see is like the five minutes of me being witty with them trying to stop it. Sure. And that this is me when I finally Yeah, then up. Hulk yeah. just loses it. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Then it's... You know, it's, that's called rage. I get it. Yeah. No, I have it. Like, yeah. I tell people all the time... Long fuse, but then when it goes... It's gone. Watch the it's fuck gone. Out. Yeah, yeah. Like, And yeah. those people come back to me after the show and be like, hey, man, so sorry. I had a good time, though. I'm like, get the fuck away from yeah. me. I will catch a charge right now. <laughs> this body will drop. <laughs> that uh, wasn't like, a bit, dude. It wasn't like a bit. I really said... I will kill your grandmother if you say another word. <laughs> Tell me where she is right now, yes. and I will make COVID look like a joke. I, I saw somebody. Uh, I don't remember her name. She's on on Instagram. It was glitter glitter cheese? I think she's a very funny chick. Yeah, and uh, the ha like the heckler wouldn't shut up, and she was like. What's your fucking deal? And she goes, I'm just shit faced and I love you. You're the best. And she was like, carry on. <laughs> that happens yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> let, she can stay. Keep talking. Whatever. Yeah. I like, I mean, the it's different, like, on, because I'm doing a lot of headlining stuff on the road now, and it's different when people pay to see you. Yeah. Although it could be chaotic too. Like, I just got back from Phoenix uh, and I couldn't even get through material. Like, they just yeah. wanted crowd work and I gave it to them for an hour and a half. Give the uh, people what they want. Give them bro. what they want. I mean, um, we, we do live podcasts, which is entirely those different. Those got to be insane. Uh, yeah. For you, I mean, right? we, we've learned uh, like a couple places where we can really move tickets Boston and New York. We've tried to do uh, second Absolutely. shows. Absolutely. Yeah. And by the time our crowd is, at, it's if it's 10 o'clock on a Thursday or Friday night, like our crowd is <laughs> hammered. <laughs> yeah. And we don't even have material to get through, but I remember DUIs in Boston go up 15% when you guys come to town. <laughs> Between the hours of 10 and 1, kids are getting hit left and right. <laughs> it's they're insane. pretty high already. Because they're so coming I, to pick I, up I, their I parents. Just, I don't even know. It's kind of <laughs> steady all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I remember uh, yeah. the first the the New York show at Caroline's. We did this, this uh, a ten o'clock show, 
And I remember looking at you guys being like, I don't know. I don't know what to do. Yeah. <laughs> like, they were louder than the microphones. They were shit. They were loving it. Screaming. We're I, just I was just like, two teachers at that point. Yeah, yeah. What do you guys <laughs> want to do? Yeah, yeah. I was like, let's just roll out a TV and, and watch a movie. Uh, let's watch was, some <laughs> clips you've seen of me on Instagram. Maybe yeah. that'll calm you we, down. We do do that sometimes. Do you, do you realize <laughs> that you are the most trusted name in news? Uh, honestly... <laughs> It, it is, I don't know if it's a good sign or a bad sign. It, I mean, I think about it all the time. Like, there's so much shit I wouldn't know about if it weren't for you. Thank you, man. When I, I don't have uh, cable, because uh, sometimes things ain't going too well. Um, and I'm like, thank I'll God I have you. KF Clancy. The F is for all facts, no printer. I, I, you got I do, it. You are, I know so much because of you. I used to, you know, be like, this is, this is a bad sign. Uh, that people are getting news from me because I don't really do any research or anything. There's been a couple that I've been like totally wrong on. <laughs> I there was one about uh, not unlike CNN or Fox yeah, or MSNBC. Yeah. I was kind of like, what? oh, I'm officially a real yeah. news man. <laughs> you just need a gambling problem and a 32 million dollar lawsuit. It's the Bill O'Reilly book. How bad I am at sex. <laughs> uh, there was one I did. Uh, there was a little bit off off beat. Because that usually it's just like celebrity bullshit. Yeah, yeah. But it was um, when El Chapo's son was getting arrested, and the cartels just weren't having it. Yeah. And they were like wreaking havoc in Mexico City. And if you looked at like CNN and the news, they were like, "They're shooting down planes. They're firing at buildings. It's pure right. chaos in the streets." And so I was like, "Oh, word! Like this is crazy." So I, <laughs> I'm doing, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm putting out my own theories about how to handle the Mexican cartel and shit. <laughs> and then people in the comments were like, "I'm from Mexico City. Like there was like a couple like gunshots, but that was really it, you know." And I, but and part of me was like, "Oh wow! Like here I am, like you know, really spreading misinformation, yeah. right?" But then I was kind of like. You guys are downplaying this a little bit. They were like, you know, there was a, there was a couple incidents at the yeah they did fire it at an airplane or two, but like no big deal. I was like, if people were at JFK just spraying a plane, it would still be kind of a big deal. But that's when I I was like, I vowed to just get back to like TikTok stories because I'm not I'm not qualified to talk about you know the Mexican government and the cartels. Anybody while, is. while we're talking about misinformation, uh, you want to know something that I learned recently and and didn't research and it might not be true at all. Oh no! Break Hell my yeah! This is, this is a crazy fact. Is this something we know, talk about a lot? Do you know? No, no, no. Oh, okay. Do you know how many uh, gun stores? Sure. Gun stores there are in Mexico? I can't even begin to guess. Guess. Is it low or high? I'm not now, guessing. Making, a lot of those people he's are making me think it's low now. <laughs> yeah. I would think there'd be a hundred thousand gun stores. I'm gonna say low because I when I think cartel i don't think that they're buying their buying guns the legally gun yeah, yeah they're like hey we'll There's wait three one. days well, I was one. it's, it's, one it's a walmart and it's run by the ar by the army you can't you <laughs> they can get all get their guns, guns from us, us. Yeah. yeah that sounds about wow. right <laughs> r.i.p ronald reagan <laughs> you set a trend <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's just wow. called contra <laughs> <laughs> right, let's, wow. let's give david webb an r.i.p too in. yeah david webb r.i.p david webb and hopefully soon oliver north <laughs> R.I.P. You walk in, the whole store's just got a yellow film to it. And it just says, the bottom of the receipt says, directed by Vince Gilligan. I'm like, what the fuck? Is that John Carlos Bezito in there? He just sold me an AR-15. That's Moff Gideon. Can, can someone Google how many Google how many gun stores there are? Are they called gun stores? Uh, so Wikipedia says two, LA Times says one. But okay, but the fact, you know, Pretty close. whatever. It really doesn't it, it, matter until under... we get a Kevin Clancy story telling us how <laughs> yeah, many it has. On, one minute, it's going to be one and a half, split the difference. <laughs> <laughs> when it's just an army surplus store run by a guy with one arm. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny doing that. How did you find out like... that there was one gun store in Mexico? I saw a tweet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you find out anything. That's my way of saying I read an article. It's really just yeah, like no. I, saw I read tweet. an article. Read, used to mean I read a headline. Yes. And yeah. I uh, read an article. Or and now I read a headline means I read a tweet. Yeah. And then if you say you saw a tweet, that means someone just replied to you. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's it. I saw There's someone levels. say the other day. Yeah. 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 There's just it levels. Was John five four three 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 two. I like <laughs> don't have a problem telling people I learned something on TikTok anymore. I used to lie so much. Be like I read this in a, a book uh, <laughs> written by BBL lover to. Um, but now I'm just like, yeah, I saw this on TikTok. Did you know that, like, what this little pocket for in jeans is Everything, for watches? 
news, dude. Like, I don't really? care. I, I think. I mean, I again. I don't know. <laughs> Misinform. Hi, misinformation. I'm Mister Information. Um, I think so. Probably not. What else could it Some be for? It's cocaine. cocaine. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. Drugs. I just yeah. I just finished the wire, and they that's where they were storing. Yeah. Yeah. That TikTok is that last me. pocket you checked before TSA? Right? Yeah. Wait, one more. <laughs> or that's the one you put in there. Like, they're not gonna look in there. Right? I started watching my stuff go through TSA after I get through the metal detector now, and it's I don't know why I'm so scared. I know what it's in there, but I'm yeah. like, I watch. There's something about seeing your own stuff go through a heat signature that's so weird. Have you uh, ever yo, watched I, it? Always a moment of panic. Yeah, and then like everybody else's seemed to just go through, but mine like stop for a second. And I'm like, this is it. This is yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> and the, I'm like, what's going? What? I'm just. It's. I have a, a friend who uh, he just found out that not everybody gets checked for bomb residue. Mm. He's he's Muslim and he's like and he, you don't oh. have to go through that and I'm like what the fuck are you talking about dude <laughs> <laughs> like a flight from Boston New York I got to get my fingertip swapped I'm like, what is going on man like dude, I don't worry about that at all when they do that I always want to be like you know if I brought a bomb I would have washed my hands <laughs> like, I, just like, I know about this step I just <laughs> turned into Tony Soprano I'm like can you tell which hand I was jacking off with earlier too which hand smells like fucking cocoa butter I just I it's I didn't fly for the first time till 24 I'm 27. Really? Really? First time I flew was to Alaska. Oh. I did my first uh, ro- uh, college gig at University of Anchorage. Really? Wow. In Alaska. You were and literally I- going like to the ends of the <laughs> earth to get this shit My up, college yeah. agent Shout was like, I got this gig for you out there in Anchorage. You want to go? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. why not? <laughs> I, I, uh, and I didn't know anything about flying. I got to LaGuardia and I took two Xanax right before... TSA check in. So by and then I had two hours before the flight. So I'm like Leo DiCaprio and Wolf of Wall Street just holding on. I'm like, it's coming, we're going. Did you gotta time it, right? Because yeah, you wanna yeah, have it, but you can't. Did not time it, it right because they had to do an emergency landing in Minnesota. I think I fell down somewhere in the print store in the airport in Minnesota. Um, and then they did a transfer to Seattle. And when I got to Seattle, that's when the first COVID case got to the US. And I was like, eh, it's probably fine. Uh, and then I went to, <laughs> I was like shaking people people's hands and shit. I was like, ah, I'm going to lick poles, whatever. Um, and then Alaska was cool. Have you ever been to Alaska? Nah. It's uh, so expensive, uh, like New York prices, because they got to get everything over from yeah, Canada. Sent in, yeah. Pain in the ass. Weed was legal out there. Mm, no. And it was cool, because like, I went to a weed store, and then there's like these two cops just arresting. There was like these two dudes in jumpsuits outside of a police station. And they didn't have a jacket on or anything. And they're just standing there in a chain gang. And I'm smoking a joint being like, boy, Alaska sure is different. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, but uh, then well, I le- did the gig. I didn't know what I was going to talk about. Because I was like, these are kids from Alaska. Like, I only have so many Sarah Palin jokes. Yeah. Like, I really, but then I was like, they're college kids. It's fine. Talk about what college kids like. Um, gig went well. Checked out of the hotel. I walked like four miles to the airport because I was like, I'm in Alaska. I don't know the next time I'm going to be here. Walked to the I airport. walked to the airport because there's like a trail. Bro, who can... You can't walk to the airport. You're not. You should not. <laughs> and I did. Imagine I, if you're like, I walked to LaGuardia. Yeah. yeah. Fucking insane. The only time in my career I've ever done that. And I didn't realize it's not normal. But I watched Fargo like the night before. So I was like, yeah, I could do that. <laughs> uh, and uh, it was fun. And it was Alaska. You said there was a trail? There was a trail. And like there's people. It's like so stereotypically Great. Alaskan. There's like dudes on like the, the tennis shoes and like they're like skiing. Yeah, and yeah. and uh, I had to. Pe- there's all these signs and they're written like Batman villains to tell you to stay away from the wild if you see a moose run the opposite direction otherwise you are fucked and I went off the trail to go pee and about 20 feet out I see a moose to this day, I don't know if that moose saw me. The fact that I'm alive tells me he saw me and moose went, are- not a threat. Well, but I've never <laughs> seen anything that big, big. in They're my life. man. Huge. Mm-hmm. I could not believe how big that, th- you, like. You, it, hit, you hit a moose with the car and you're in that trouble, ca- Yeah, moose. that moose hits you. Yeah. You yeah. are. There was that video fucked. that went viral, well, I don't know, a couple years ago. Oh, of the moose just running through the, the traffic. Yeah. No, there was one just like. The, oh, maybe it was a buffalo. It was kind of no. Well, I, I, no, I think I, it was. There's, moose. A, there's one with the moose where they're just kind of like alongside it, and he's just kind of walking down the highway. No, this one's running was, through snow. Oh yeah, he's training no, for the, a triathlon. The, the moose was like, it was just you know someone slowly walking by, and he was just walking his ass like on the middle of the highway, being like, "I'm a moose." Yeah, that's my, as fast as he has road. to go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. there was one spot. I saw of a. Um, it was like a, a, a driveway cam where a moose 
he shed his antlers and you can like see him just like walking stop and be like hold on something's changing and then he just shook <laughs> him off yeah. rid of him? and then went damn yeah, and yeah. then just kept like, going the, like, totally just, full uh, he still had like like a little yeah. bit there That's but like i didn't know they feel. shed antlers yeah. Great. Um, I, have you seen those I'm videos of them right like now. snapping barnacles off crabs yeah those that looks like it would that's things. like pimple popping for, yeah, for sea creatures. Yo, but they, like they have one. Uh, feel crazy. They have uh, lizards who uh, get their um, oh, oh their nose, not their eyes. There's eyes, and but the sometimes lizards get their nose like plugged up with yeah. almost like you know lizards have like little like um, you know with their armor almost. You know yeah, I mean? yeah. And they have one that gets stuck in their nose, and they pop it out, and it was like, oh, you know, my man is breathing. Yeah, really oh, amazing. That. Yeah, I can't imagine you're carrying your moose antlers around. And all of a sudden, you lose that Just weight. Shed it? Yeah. <laughs> it's like going to the bathroom after Chipotle. It's like, dude, I'm a whole new man. I don't know what I find more uncomfortable lizards or people who own them as pets Yo, no offense i just people. i had a roommate who had well, a lizard listen, i didn't like lizards them. are lizards they, you know they're not they're, they're, they're not my favorite animal but they just do their thing if you own a lizard we broke it down before legitimately there's only two animals you can own and it's really more like one it's a dog and a cat right and the cat can even be questionable at times dog and a cat you're good Think about Agreed. anything else. And I don't count fish because to me that's like a decoration. If you want to have a, an aquarium. <laughs> they are decoration. That's, like a, that's a cool like decoration, yeah. whatever. Anything else, you're a weirdo. Anything else, you better be a porn star. Because all of my favorite porn stars have snakes. Snakes, spiders, <laughs> that all that weird shit. A really quick jump there. <laughs> that Dude, I, I can start listing some it's names. Like, they are they all, always playing with snakes. Listen, all I'm saying is all the pedophiles I know own ferrets. That's all I'm saying. Everybody I know that can't live there in school has at least two ferrets. That's it's never just do. one. I only know one person who ever had a ferret. Pedophile? <laughs> they lived. They lived at Disney. Yep. There you go. Live, Celebration yeah. Florida is technically part of Disney, and people also just live there full time. Yep. What is Dude, going on with Disney parent. right now? You, you. I feel like you would know. <laughs> uh, they're like trying to mm. annex it or something. Or Ron DeSantis. Oh, oh, yeah, oh yeah, DeSantis yeah. around the ring about something. They, yeah. DeSantis wants it to be um, like you have to pay monster tolls right. to like drive into Disney. Yeah. But there's there's locals who like drive those roads to and from work that right. would just get wrecked. Yeah. Like I just got to drive to, you know, my office, but I'm p crossing through like a Disney toll. So it's like $50. Got you. Uh, so yeah, he's just trying to, that doesn't trying seem to... like a good idea to fuck with Disney like that. No, they, they... That, that feels to me like, like, uh, like they're like the Vatican inside Italy. You know what I mean? like, <laughs> like Disney's like, we'll fucking kill you in the middle. Oh, the that's Spirito Sanctus. Disney is perfect. <laughs> Bible is pretty clear about this. Oh, -ho. <laughs> yeah, like, like Elsa better not kiss day. a girl in the fourth Frozen movie. <laughs> oh, -ho, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, they, uh, I just see feel like Disney be like, all right, peace out. We're going to Atlanta, that's and true. then like, Florida's like they, fucked. Yeah, Florida would lose, you know, probably like half their income like yeah. Florida, at the end of the day disney calls the shot i bet you who's it michael Iger, whoever I bob, bob, bob Iger, Iger, yeah who left yeah he's it yeah, tanked bounced, and then right? came back yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah i'm sure that guy if he wanted to could be president like you know what i mean oh like, he yeah, calls yeah, yeah. Shots. yeah yeah he, he makes moves he makes decisions i, I, I like, saw okay. someone someone asked me about that the other day where it's like do i think the disney corporation should be able to like dictate how florida politics right. work no is it hilarious? <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't even, I don't even know who could be president at this point anymore. Literally anybody. I, I don't know who couldn't. I think finally what you were told as a kid, which was always like, even when I was like five, I was like, you're fucking lying. Like, I know. Like, like, you could be anything one day. You could be president. I was like, yeah. No, I can't do that. You could be. I think now you can tell anyone they could be president. And they, what what do accurate. you think is, yeah. there, there's, how many jobs out there do you think are harder to become than president now? Let's see, proctologist. Like, I don't know why that came to mind. Right <laughs> now. Like, like be, being an astronaut is way harder than being president. No, you, astronauts easy. You're crazy. No, because presidents don't have to do that spin thing. That feels like the hardest part of being an astronaut. <laughs> I, you could go through all of it, and then they're like, "Okay, we're gonna put you in like zero gravity, yeah, 10, negative ten g force where your face." Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd yeah. be out. I'd be done. That looks crazy. They're, they're like, "All right, if you want to go to space, you have to watch a hundred Challenger documentaries." <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to if do that when you're president. Want to go after that, <laughs> you still yeah. want to go after that? Then be my guest. <laughs> Bring a buddy. Who gives a shit? Uh, I feel like it would be way easier to be 
like a SpaceX astronaut. Yeah. yeah, that's, yeah they're yeah. just looking for guys who are probably on a watch list. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, let's send in the space. It doesn't matter. Those, Astronauts those are definitely won. Those are human guinea pigs. Yeah. 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 Like, Elon's pretty confident. He's like, this <laughs> might this might go south. We're going be. to Mars with brain chips, boys. <laughs> let's load up. That girl's going to be sorry she said no to me seven years ago. When I come back half chimp and half applesauce brain. Let's roll, brothers. I'm ready to continue to not make eye contact with anyone. Um, that's that brain chip's going to do. Yeah, astronaut definitely won. Veterinarian, that feels way harder to no, be than president. Easy as shit, dude. You got to be able to do everything. Chicken, no, duck, yeah, but that's dog, cat, fish, veterinarian. It's the cheesecake factory of doctors. <laughs> <laughs> like, you got to do everything. Nothing has to be good. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. You just got to be like, uh, $1,200. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's really what they do, too. Yeah, you got everything's over. $1,200. Everything's either everything. 700 <laughs> They go 700 or 1200 That's it. Every, yeah. every, but also every fucking veterinarian, every veterinarian's visit is just a hostage negotiation. <laughs> yeah. It's like, this is $5,000 or I can't. It. Yeah, <laughs> they like, also they judge the fuck out of you. Yes, I took my dog. They're like they were looking at his chart, and they're yeah. like, "It looks like you were here on this date and this date." Is that true? And I'm like, "I don't." I'm yeah, sorry, my dog remember. really likes Legos. I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm not home all the time. They were like, "Well, what do you what do you like plan to do?" I was like, "I, you know, I don't know." Like, they rub some dirt on it. Yeah, <laughs> like, his paws hurting. Yeah. Uh, they do what? negotiate really quickly. I had one one time I went in and they were like, "It's going to cost about five grand," and I was like, "I really only have fourteen hundred. And they're like, Sold. "Yeah, fourteen hundred. Yeah, we'll yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> fuck, I should have said absolutely one of those. Like, <laughs> like who is running this? this guy? I swear yep. to God, I gave him to him and he just put it right in his pocket. He just tickled the dog twice. And then the dog was up. Like, what are you doing to my dog? No, last time I was at the vet, I told this on the podcast before, a guy showed up with a uh, shoebox with a parrot in it. God, let it go. And, yo, the, the woman opened it up. First of all, I didn't think it was going to be a bird in there. <laughs> but it was, it was so, so very dead. <laughs> Judging by the fact that it's an animal that can fly that was just sitting in a box. And I watched the woman go like, like and he just walked in so casually. I think it was like my daughter's out in the car and we have right, to like right, help right. the family pet. Yeah. And he walked in with like, I know I have a dead box. A dead animal's box. And he handed it to her and she was like, okay, well, like what? What did you want us to do here, today, sir? And he was kind of like, I didn't hear him. He was kind of like, rrr, 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 rrr. and they were like, yeah, no, this is dead. <laughs> he went, he just went and walked out. And it was the craziest shit I've ever he seen. He just punted the box in the parking lot. Well, honey, it came I, back. I, I, love to, up. I would love to imagine he got back to the car going, told you so, Janice. Oh like, did you no, ever it, have a pet die that your parents covered for you? Like a farm uh, thing or something? I did not, but my mother found out when she was like 35 that the whole upstate uh, dog they told thing. her that, that that their dog went to be a security dog on the farm <laughs> <laughs> did well, she believe that so she was that like that dog a is 13 years adult. old when dogs are their sharpest and now he's <laughs> gonna go to work Time he to can't see animal. and he has three legs and the government said we need him there he's gonna help us stop another 9-11 which hasn't happened yet but once it does you'll understand he'll be a 40 year decorated vet <laughs> my dad dropped that on me last week I had this cat when I was a kid kid named Tyson and my dad after and Mike. Him, after Mike yeah. yeah um cat loved me hated my dad pissed on everything my dad owned and when we moved into a new house my dad was like oh we're going to send Tyson up to a farm and then I was on the phone with him the other day and he was like yeah so they killed that dog like we did your cat and I was like what and he was like yeah 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 same place where I'd always go to try I'm like what other animals went there like that what else have you I had a Rottweiler when I was a kid that, that but yeah Bomb. bit my dad in the hand when I was a baby and my dad was like there we go farm they're all on the farm I'm keeping Yo, old McDonald's you? shit running man he is fucking thank did keeping the lights on because of me that TikTok couple um they posted their daughter who her she looked like Chucky she she was all swollen and had like a scar across her you know Chucky the yeah, doll yeah. right and the TikTok you know, Chucky the supermodel <laughs> everybody knows Chucky the baddie mm -hmm. and, and killing the, it the, the the like second slide was like when they finally like make up with each other and then they like she was petting the animal again. And no. TikTok did not like that. No, 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 <laughs> they were no, like, no. "This animal fucking mauled your daughter, yeah. and one day you will have a dead daughter on your hands." <laughs> but like, and, no, 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 we keep her in a cage now. It's okay. You can say dead. <laughs> the girl's in the cage. <laughs> but it was the top comment I loved. 
because usually I find TikTok comments to be like the stupidest arguments of all. Oh, yeah. But the top comment was just, I don't know why people feel the need to share every single thing mm-hmm. about their lives. Like to, to be like, let me put this picture of my mauled daughter, daughter. <laughs> and then tell people that we're keeping the status quo. Yeah. It's just like, do whatever you want with your dog and your ugly Chucky daughter now. But you don't need to yeah, expose it to fun. the world. Same thing with the fucking the the, the, the dude, the, the baseball player on with the popcorn. Oh yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like just don't fucking tell people about this because that and the Tom Brady kids. kissing his kids and the Dalai Lama <laughs> getting his tongue sucked. Like I'm a Buddhist and I took my beads off very slowly last week. I was just like, no, 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 Yo, no, no. Going back to the church. Was when he said the, the the statement said. You know, the Dalai Lama likes to play around and, and tease with people. Even And then it was like, comma, even on camera. Which is like, well, then what the like, fuck listen, is going on off camera? You did you freak? see how hot that kid was? <laughs> Tell me you wouldn't. Tell me anybody in this room wouldn't. And the Buddha himself wouldn't come down. Don't meet your heroes, especially if you're a child. <laughs> don't, you're in don't danger. Ever, if you go near a religious leader yeah. as a child, stay away. Crazy. Only one who's safe is Jared Leto. He seems to be doing pretty good with that <laughs> island down there he is that dude fucks <laughs> dude i watched the uh the blink 22 coachella set the other day mm-hmm. and, and tom delong i think it's delong delong whatever it's, however it's pronounced um he does because blink blink's like awesome at banter on stage and all that shit yeah mm-hmm. and he was just like in between one song he's like yeah, uh, is tom the one who's like uh, aliens, aliens yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah who like he like like tom Tom like exposed aliens. Yeah, it, well, he's like, what I'm did quitting. he do? I don't know about. He this. was like, I'm quitting Blink 182. I'm going to prove aliens exist to the world. He was oh, the shit. one. And then, if you've ever seen the but, um the like Tic Tac, uh, Tic Tac they call it? no Tic Tac. It's like the one famous like uh, UFO video where like you it's see super, them zipping yeah, around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He released that video. The and Blink 182 gov- dude. And, 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 and the government was like, that's real. They like confirmed it and they were like, oh, it is an yeah. unidentified like, shit. Not a joke. Like Tom yeah. is the reason like yeah. the government was like, all right, we gotta release all the aliens. People thought he was like what? a tinfoil hat guy and they were like, no, 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 that's it, real. Actually, during the set, um, it, there's a song, uh, I actually forget what the name of the song is, but there's a lyric where it's like, we all know conspiracies are dumb because I'm up all night long. And, and he, he, he's singing, he goes, we all know conspiracies are dumb. No, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but anyway, during the set, they're kind of in between songs, they're kind of doing banter. And, and it was Coachella. It was only announced three days before. So like no one had a ticket. It wasn't their crowd. Right, right, right. imagination. And so I don't think anyone really knew what they yeah, were like they on do, stage yeah. and shit yeah. like that. And he's like, I just want to give a, a quick warning to everyone here at Coachella. Uh, I went to the Dalai Lama kissing booth earlier, and I wouldn't do that. It's 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 not what you think it's going to be. <laughs> Yo, wouldn't that be great to be like, oh, that's great. Uh, uh, you're a fucking rock star. You mix in a couple, like, yeah, a little... Stand up comedy material. I and said you just that. Got the yeah. World in the palm of your hand. I used to listen to, and I, I don't listen to the podcast really. I listen to one, and it's just about the Boston Bruins. Um, and uh, I realized that, like, I liked podcasts when I was a kid because I used to listen to Mark, Tom, and Travis show, which is their live recording. Mm-hmm. And I used to listen to it all the time, and it was just because of their banter in between was funny. Mm-hmm. Like, I would like, I would like, like podcasts. I would like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, just yeah. doing like podcast stuff. Like, they even they, they're doing callbacks on the Coachella set where he's like, like, Five songs later, he's like, no, no, but seriously, I was talking about the Dalai Lama. <laughs> he goes, I, he yo, goes, that I kid would... got off easy. It made me do way worse. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I mean, I know, I know, uh, you know, I know Adam Sandler used to get up there with the guitar. And, yes, and I know uh, even Francis with the piano yeah. here. But if you were like a true, if you were a, a musician first who happened to be funny right you know and it was almost like you play a song and then do like that's just like in between songs right yeah yeah. yeah. but if you were to do like you know a song and then like five minutes of material and, <laughs> and you had some sort of hybrid set i mean that would be like the most entertaining thing in the fucking world it's it, it, you also have done the hard part like you don't even have to be that funny you just have to be charming yeah Your people yeah, are right, already yeah. there <laughs> right. Right. Well, right. once you find out that you're if you love uh, an athlete who like happens to do a little bit of music or right. or ha- or has an interest that you like when I find out if I find out a comic also likes the Mets or something like that I'm like oh yeah. oh like you're you're good I right, really right, like right, you and right. now yeah. I know something else yeah. about you so you don't even you don't even need oh, to be that great I'm at the it. opposite you don't like them to be like I don't like, real like people. people who I don't like I was actually thinking about this the other day I don't I went to you know what it was I went to I went shopping I went to a store and. Gun store? Oh, yeah. <laughs> the one? <laughs> the one in Mexico. I got my Army Jeep. Yeah. The, the gun store. <laughs> and I was like, 
was like, man, I hate doing things I like because I just see all the other people who I now have something in common with, and I'm like, I hate all of you. Like he is you, the most. That was the darkest thought I've ever. Had. <laughs> that seriously, what? Oh, I disagree. I've heard, you. I've I've been like not having a good time with nobody. I don't know. Uh, Yo, I've nothing. heard this man talk about. I I walk by buildings and I think about jumping off them, and that was darker. <laughs> Dude, I want to be your friend, man, but you, I also you, don't. You, I'm scared. You just being like, I can't go to the store because I see other people there that are when, ha- like that are happy, and that makes when me you, sad. no, not is sick. Not that they're happy. <laughs> it's that they that I'm like, damn, I'm like you. And like, 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 I, oh, <laughs> like when you yeah, when you meet people who share an interest that you share, yeah, and you're like, oh, you're I'm actually one of those guys, insufferable to be around, right? Yeah. And like, oh yeah, even, like when you catch a glimpse of yourself in the mirror, I, one of the guys on my Mets podcast, like the other day, was like arguing with people on Twitter about the Mets, and I reached out to him and I was like, yo, dude, like. Don't do it. It's not worth it, you know? And he kept going. He kept going. And I was like, this is crazy. Why is this guy fucking doing this? This guy is a dumb asshole. And I was like, oh, my God. This is what I look like to everybody. That, that I can understand. Where yeah. you're like, wait a That's minute. That's what I mean. Yeah. When, like, like, I'm dreading going to the Taylor Swift show. I'm like, oh. Oh, like, you, all of us are. Like, yeah. like, it, I, like the, the little girls will be fine. Where I'm like, okay, that makes sense. Never when say I, that out loud again. <laughs> Don't ever say I, I thought I'm going to the Taylor Swift concert. All the little girls will be fine. I'm happy I with them. It's everyone. Everyone else. I wish it could just be me and all the little girls, and we could prance around. And I got a blank space, baby, and I'm writing Abby's name, Eliza's name, Maddie's name. You're all coming to my little pony birthday party. It's gonna I be fantastic. See you at the it. Dalai Lama booth. I was like, maybe I shouldn't say something. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm fucking little girls. It's are great. Fine. But then, when I see like the 30 year old, I'm like, oh, you fucking yeah, yeah, like, guy. Oh, like, you know, I'm, I'm like you. Dude. What are you gonna do? And you know, like, what are you gonna do? You're just gonna jump. I think jump that's kind of sweet. See, I have a friend who's like 26. And she's really excited to go to the Taylor Swift show because, like, she grew up with her. I can't think of like any other artist that like that that is at that level. Yeah, like, because you, like you have to have the longevity, right? And still yeah. be relevant. She probably and started listening to her when she was 10, 11 right, years old, and right. now she's I think I was 20. a sophomore in high school. When I started, yeah, yeah when, I mean, when Tim McGraw came out, something like that. Maybe is Tim McGraw your Taylor Swift? No, that's her. The, her first like hit was called oh, Tim McGraw. Oh, it's called Tim McGraw. Yeah, I thought you were Tim McGraw. Tim McGraw. <laughs> Tim McGraw. <laughs> my, my mom loved song. Tim McGraw. One time she, the one time she got away from because uh, she's like she worked shit. Away, like, she yeah, 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 we had her in the basement. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she worked like uh, she was a nurse. She worked crazy hours, but she had like one vacation when I was a kid to go see Tim McGraw and Faith Hill. She went with yeah. like my grandmother. They're married, like, right? to, I Those think. So. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. She went to like Pennsylvania to go see her that weekend. I was like ten years old. And uh, my dad had a, a PS2. This was like probably 2006, 2007. And I loved uh, the Battlefront games, Star Wars mm. Battlefront, the OG. So, and but I was not allowed to play them on his PlayStation. And so I would delete the data right after I was done playing it. And he was really into that game, Blitz. The league yeah, yeah. that just would cheat all the time, mm-hmm. just aggravate. And I accidentally he had like maybe 60 hours invested in that game and I deleted it by accident. And then I just, after I did that, I just went upstairs and I was like, I'm just going to pretend I don't know what happened. Totally. <laughs> yeah. totally. I woke up to him. He grabbed me by the yeah. chest. <laughs> and the next thing I knew, I was downstairs on the couch with his foot on my chest. And then I just got the worst ass beating of my life. I used to be much darker. All the black came off of me that day. I went from one day this kid's going to have a hard time with the cops to he looks like he has good credit. And my mom came home mm. being like, I got you all this guys from all this stuff from the Tim McGraw concert, which made the weekend even worse because I didn't give a fuck about Tim McGraw. Now I got this. It's like when they brought Dasani to those people in Houston when the power went out. Like, now they got to boil the water again. It doesn't matter. This sucks. Yeah. Tim McGraw for some, sorry, that was a trauma dump. You said Tim McGraw, and I was like, speaking of Tim McGraw, here's this time my dad beat the shit out of me. <laughs> that did not connect you ever at seen all. Friday Night Lights? Kind of like that. Yeah, I walked in talking about molested, and we're getting glory hold by the Pope. This is great. I love the Vatican. This is so great. This is like that 70s show, but only hide. <laughs> Nobody feels safe. The, the fucking fact that your dad oh, had a video game <laughs> system 
And, like that's like the meanest thing I ever heard. That like like it's one thing if your dad doesn't let you do things. You but, can't like, play the video like, you games. Can't, yeah. You're a child and you can't play with the toys. We like, had a GameCube and that was Jackson's. supposed to make us be okay. Uh, GameCube. We were like, you have the GameCube, you'll be fine. And I'm like, how many fucking times can I play Mario Sunshine? I want to yeah. play San Andreas. I'm yeah, ten. GTA, dude. I don't yeah. care. I want to yeah. kill a hooker with a katana. <laughs> that urge never goes away if you don't satisfy it at ten. Yo. If you have a kid out there, make sure he's playing as many violent video games as he can before puberty. But Otherwise, those son. wires get crossed, and he ends up in the NFL. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> now, you know what you know what Macaulay Culkin felt like when he went to Neverland. Like, no, you can't play with a toy. <laughs> to, to the bedroom it's for you. Rough. Yeah, my kid, my kid is five, and the other day, uh, I went out. My dad was watching him. Later in the day, he goes, "So I, I think my game's almost done downloading." And I was like, "What? Like you?" You know how to download your own games now? Like, <laughs> That's you used to be like, I had to buy them. And he was like, yeah, yeah. Like, it's almost, I, I you know, it was almost finished. And I was like, I can't believe this guy bought a game for himself. I am like, all right, we'll see what it is. And I get home, and well, it's it? God of War. <laughs> <laughs> which is, like, yes. literally, like, Viking axe murder. Yeah. And I think actual sex scenes. <laughs> like, That's great. Teach him young. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. Get it out now. Press X to meet the Dalai Lama. <laughs> <laughs> the war is, the, it's all in the Middle East. Over there. Um, Yo, so what do you, when you're 17 and doing comedy, Yeah, what are you doing comedy about? Like, what, what I was doing a lot of impressions. That's all I could uh, do. Okay. Like, okay. I, I remember uh, being 16 and wanting to get into comedy and having that same thought. No one's ever asked me that before. Like, like what, wondering, like, what do you talk about? Yeah. Um, and I, because like my... That people will respect at least. Right, yeah. 16, there's plenty of things to talk about with your yeah, friends. right. But a crowd of adults would be like, shut the fuck <laughs> That's up. That's the big thing, yeah. yeah. And when I was... Like 16, 17, starting to go to clubs. That's when Pete Davidson was, you know, a couple of years older than me, just starting to get success. And him and Matt Reif were sort of my role models for seeing how young guys, what they would talk about. But also, I wasn't really doing a lot of material like them because I grew up with like, my dad was a wrestler when I was a kid. He was an amateur uh, pro wrestler. So I went on a lot of his road gigs with him. And he was also a DJ. But so he hated listening to music, and we would only listen to stand up albums like Bill Cosby, Carlin, mm. Seinfeld, all the greats. Like, that's what I would he listen to. to music because it was like work. Yeah, he just like didn't listen to newer music. And when we did listen to music, it was like, I'm a huge 80s and 70s fan because that's what my dad grew up with. So that's what I listened to whenever he wanted to listen to music. Um, so, anyway, once I started doing stand up, I, I, I was never really. Uh, you ever notice, like, this is the deal with that and X, Y, Z? I started to get funny. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you how I fucked up. I, I did mics. I was doing impressions. Didn't really have an act, but I'd be like, here's what this would sound like if he worked at CVS. Yeah. Da, 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 da. My first ever show show was 2014, New York Comedy Club. I go on stage. The guy before me is, like, divorced, and he's getting into stand-up because his therapist probably told him to do it to keep him from dropping a toaster in the bathtub. <laughs> and he's just playing with the microphone cord and it's getting kind of like, loose. This it's could hold, shit. probably. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's the weight limit? What kind of yeah. pipes we got? <laughs> <laughs> 275? <laughs> I'll be back next week. I'm cutting out carbs. Uh, I go on stage, mm -hmm. grab the mic, cord comes out, completely blank on my silly little act, and I start doing... Hannibal Burris's material. Mm -hmm. I'm like 18. I do like maybe three minutes, and then just I'm like straight up, just his act? straight up doing his act. And <laughs> when I get off stage, uh, wait, but like, like impersonating him? No, it's like you're just stealing his. Yeah, video. just <laughs> ripping it off, <laughs> just stealing it from, and I'm killing. <laughs> I'm doing so well, but like you wouldn't know it on my face because like I'm terrified. The cord went out. I go on autopilot. I'm terrified. I don't know what to do. I get off as I'm getting off stage. I got off early. The host like has his phone out of the video of Hannibal of doing Hannibal the right. bit that I just did and I just rush out like this guy as I'm leaving is like hey man what's your name and I'm like Troy Bond nice to meet you whatever rush out go home go lay in bed lights are out go on Twitter I have hundreds of notifications and I'm like what the fuck somebody tagged Hannibal told them that some guy was doing his act at New York Comedy Club uh, Hannibal <laughs> quoted the tweet tagged me and it DM'd me being like is this true and I was like what the fuck what is going on? And I was like, uh, yeah, sorry. I was uh, doing a tribute to you, Hannibal. And then he writes back, I heard you didn't say my name once. That's a big part of playing tributes. And I was like, I am so screwed. And then I didn't do stand-up for a year. And in yeah. that time, all I did was write. I wrote 
every I would get out of the King Kong suit, right, 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 right. <laughs> like go back in the suit, right, 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 right. And I learned in that time that all I could talk about was what I knew, which was me and yeah. personal. Like that was the one time I could go on stage and be a narcissist yeah, yeah, and right. not be yelled at for it because yeah, I could right. just talk about my family. I come from a mixed family. I could talk about that. Uh, I could I could talk about uh, literally anything. Once I learned that I could talk about me rather than be observational, yeah. uh, which I still think is great. Like the greats of observational comedy, you know, you got Seinfeld and even Mulaney now, his new specials coming out. It's going to be very personal mm. with what he's gone through. And, and I've seen mm. a couple of the clips and I watched him run an hour. Uh, and, and he's somebody who I consider to be like the king of, of observational yeah. comedy. And, and he's at a point where he's making it very personal. So once I started doing that, then it, they say it takes you about 10 years to find yeah. your voice. Um, crazy. which is true. And I oh, remember God. being like 21, 22, being like, I started when I was 17. I'm a child protege. I got my yeah. voice down. And I was going in all you these auditions. Voice down. Yeah, I got Hannibal's <laughs> voice down to 18. <laughs> but uh, I didn't know who I was yet. And honestly, it really, I was doing really well right up to COVID. Like, I'd say like a year before COVID, I was really starting to gain momentum. But I had a really bad cocaine problem. So <laughs> if I didn't, if COVID didn't happen, I probably would have died. Because that, that, that's what made you stop? Yeah, I not initially. <laughs> Good old unemployment money came in. Then I had serious cocaine money. Um, thank you, well, yeah, Governor I Cuomo. About that when when COVID first started, I was yeah, like, I was like the weed's got to be going up, but I imagine cocaine's going. Oh, down. it was insane. <laughs> yeah, um, and I lived with three Irish bartenders who were all out of work and all were making unemployment money. So we're just doing shitloads of blow. I'm just, I lost just, stand up doing blow and sitting in your doing apartment? blow from seven to seven. <laughs> Sometimes and when I was you doing blow to get I was doing ketamine to come down off blow right. and i'd be popping like three or four xanax just to get off of that and then start back up the next day and then um and like uh, all was a blast man. i was like it was great i don't that remember was anything it i was watched a, a lot of yellow submarine for some reason <laughs> that's all i really remember i woke up in the middle of a field upstate in poughkeepsie at one point don't remember much there was just a lot of drinking a lot of boozing no fucking um, and then like august got off uh, then, then everything opened back up again, and that's when I started to develop the momentum. I was coming up on the ten year mark, and uh, started posting stuff online, and uh, that's a good positive reinforcement thing because stand up, you get immediate gratification from yeah. the audience, whether it's going well or whether it's not. Yeah. Um, you know, right then and there. Plus, like the only thing, Steve Martin said, the only thing difference between a good joke and a great joke is basically nothing because. All comedy is, is is a it's a place, and the only variable is people in the room. Mm -hmm. And there's different people at every single show you're at. So sometimes, mm -hmm. I do like three, four shows a night. Sometimes things don't go well. Sometimes things do go well. Mm -hmm. um, and once COVID opened, or, or once everything opened back up during COVID, I was on seven nights a week, five shows a night. And during that period between then and now, I really was able to craft it out. And, and I feel like now I'm at about the 10 year mark and i feel as though i'm just finally not even getting my voice but finding it and right, understanding right. where i'm at and also it's just a lot of trial and error too and i'm not really afraid to fail uh i'm more afraid of of uh not, not trying, trying. Yeah. to, to well, because you really don't know what's gonna is stick it, is there anything else you would do for 10 years that like like if someone came to you right now and was like Start this up, and in ten years you might be okay. You might you might be, uh, you might be starting to yeah. get okay. At okay that. at it, yeah. Crazy. Maybe not. You astronaut and, and, oh, president. Uh, you, <laughs> you, you can do that right away with <laughs> you'll experience. make like no money alone. No that. money the yeah. whole time, and you'll have to work as a gorilla. Um, <laughs> but really, like that's that's crazy. I was able to take every kick in the balls because you have it's this weird self loathing hating yourself thing all the time and there's this other like well this hurts but it's in service of that like i totally mm -hmm. understand scientology <laughs> i get it mm -hmm. i would i i they 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 take those Sounds beat. Like a, like a great <laughs> that's a jump too I know that. <laughs> but like i watch them and i'm like oh you're you're get, taking all these beatings from these tiny little men because you believe that your soul is going to go to another galaxy and you'll be sure. free like that's not that different from Anything else? From we, anything we else do, in yeah. life you're doing, like yeah. maybe you'll get to do that one day. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I always kn knew I would be successful. I just didn't know in what capacity. And success to me, at the lowest level, would have been just to do this and make enough money to pay my rent and buy food. Sure. Mm -hmm. That would have been enough. Yeah. And that's still kind of where I'm. I think I'm, that's where like the successful people, 
uh, operate. Because if you like, absolutely, and, and maybe the mega successful people are the ones who are like, I, 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 I'm gonna make it, and they grind their way to be yeah. like Kevin Hart or some shit. But it's the people who are like, I just want to be able to do this. I wanted to be able to and do something I love it, because know? my parents, I watched them work their whole life and not make any money. And they're miserable the whole time. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, at least if I'm going to be miserable, I'm going to do something I love mm. while I'm doing it. Yeah, and totally. And whether it worked out or not, like I, if I had to be a doorman at the very comedy club to get me on stage, I would have done that. Mm -hmm. I, I would have. Uh, there's no. You, you, you find out what your limit is every day you torture yourself sure. in this dream. Oh, You're like, wow, God. I guess I'll I can do that now. And yeah. it's really by you, you when you look back like five years of your career, you go, wow, I did that. Yeah. Which is yeah. a cool feeling to look at. That's the only time I take pride in myself. That and after I shave my pubes. So I'm like, wow, look at that. Look at you. Good morning, Mr. Johnson. <laughs> uh, did you ever talk to Hannibal since? No. <laughs> uh, I haven't seen him. Um, I hope I, it's funny. It's almost better to be doing like several minutes of straight up plagiarism. I know. And like, like I, I genuinely think that's better than like if you stole like one or two jokes. Yeah. Because it's almost like, I don't know, man. I went on I'm autopilot. I'm clearly a very I think struggling I, I, I comic. Yeah. It was just like out of material. <laughs> he is struggling would, with autism. Yeah. That's for sure. Um, <laughs> you can speak to it better as a comic, but I, I would think if someone just did like exactly what I would I almost did, laugh. I'd be like, yeah, that's hilarious. Yeah. Like, but, yeah. but particularly also like as a, you're a kid. Yeah, like, like, someone right. was like making money and like. I had know, somebody you know. do it to me at a show I was hosting a few months ago where they took one of my bits and I was in the back green room and like every server in the club came back poking their head out like a Looney Tune. They're like, Did you hear that? And I was like, What? They were like, They just did your joke. And I was like, Which one? And he told me, and it was funny. I laughed a lot um, I, because I was like, Good for him. Good for him. Uh, I, Hannibal was kind of, he could have been way more of an asshole to yeah, me. And just yeah. like in Twitter passing too, you know, nothing that happens in Twitter happens yeah, yeah, in yeah. real life. Right. Um, <laughs> but I did, uh, it, it, I'm glad that happened. Because now it's at a point where I put all of my stuff through such refinery because I don't even watch comedy, to be honest with you, like on Netflix or anything else. Live setting is the best place to watch it, in my opinion. So like anytime I get to watch it or anytime I do watch it, it'll be in a club. But like I try not to even watch specials because one grain of sand gets yeah. in there and I'm like, damn. Like, I've, I've said that about podcasts. It, it does. Yeah. I, I think it's because I, I like I think I just actually don't want to listen to it, but I make the excuse that like because I probably should for work and all that right, shit. Right, right, I right. make the excuse that like I don't want to in case I, I don't something I don't think I think that's yeah. real. I think yeah. I, I don't think I think we should listen to our own podcast and like hear ourselves and think about what we could do better and shit and that I will make excuses for you <laughs> should get a JBL and home. play your own podcast walk down the street <laughs> like, motherfucker spitting you hear this shit dude I, I can't even hear like I, I know comics like to record themselves and shit like that like it, I mean, it just happened an hour ago where like I the moment I hear my voice I just start yelling so yeah, I can't la, la, hear la, 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 la. I don't listen I, I have hundreds of hours of tape just from this year so far and I've maybe watched back 20 minutes of it yeah, it's yeah. really like I'll be on stage and this thing will happen I'll be like oop that's a good clip and then I'll go on go and just plug it up but I'm sure I have so much stuff that would be great I will never know because I'm never gonna watch it yeah. I'm just like looking at being like look at this piece of shit yeah. you really think you're fooling everybody don't you one day they're gonna see you're gonna crack my friends you're gonna crack and that omelet's gonna fall right on the ground and all the little mice are gonna eat you from the toes up to the ears and then Hannibal's gonna come back and finish the job and then there you are back to square one the ferret the, the and the pedophile the ferret the pedophile and the uh, Pope Francis glory hole right back to square one I'll never be back at Barstool did you have a, a moment um, I wanna say like uh, comedian destroys racist heckler was like a big that thing was for the, you? yeah or, they, or you were racist or I something? didn't even say <laughs> my title of that's what everybody was calling it and I never it's comedy videos are so the titles are almost pornographic yeah sometimes. they definitely are it's where they're like, like mad libs yeah comedian participates in petite Asian yes. gangbang I'm like <laughs> oh my god <laughs> yep um, but yeah that was a big there was kind of two pop-off moments last year for the following uh and and i could speak on it because it's interesting because people come up and uh, you know the modern seinfeld ones were a big thing uh and i wrote those years ago oh, you i wrote did? those oh, modern you were, seinfeld you were modern seinfeld I wrote those maybe in 2016, 2017. And oh, then, shit. Uh, Wait, you're modern Seinfeld? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the yeah. Instagram account? Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. My, oh, oh. my Instagram videos oh, are oh, of the modern. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, okay. I, I did. I, I wrote those years ago. Um, 
And I know there is an Instagram account yeah, where they, yeah, yeah. I think we may have connected after those videos yeah. started coming out because he was it. sending me those people. But I would do like Jerry Kramer and George and like, I, I, but I wrote those sketches years ago, started posting them in like 2021. They got some traction, posted one over the summer last year. And I think I went from like 10K on Instagram to 150K yeah, within like a week. But I had a big TikTok following. I mean, I was at like 250 something on TikTok. So that's where the 10K on Instagram came from. But then the thing that happens, and this is why I always tell people if you're posting on social media and it flops leave it up because once people started finding those sketches they find all the other stuff yeah, yeah. and they're like oh he's a stand-up let's go see his shows and like they would come see the shows and they're like wow was, then my stand-up video started to do well then you don't also want to pigeonhole yourself into just doing that one thing like yeah. i could have done a modern seinfeld video every day for 10 years if i wanted to mm -hmm. but i was like i'm going to diversify and just throw it to the wall and see what sticks because every time they told me the rule of this or that i've broken it and it seems there to do no okay rules, and go man. well there yeah, are none yeah, yeah. and then the second blow up about six months later was when that woman was at the club and she called me uh racist and like the thing about that was is she was drunk i knew she was drunk before i even went on stage this was an 11 o'clock show friday oh. midtown uh broadway comedy club we get a lot of tours there sometimes uh people are just kind of they've been walking around all day they're tired they've been drinking it's a problem and it's a basement um and uh i do maybe 10 minutes about dogs. Sometimes I just can't get off of a rant. And like, I was going after pugs, German shepherds, everything, rescue dog owners. I was just going at it. And then I get the light, which means I got like five minutes left. And I had to get this, this Trump joke in for this tape I was trying to submit. So I just did a hard turn and I was like, and, and she was like, chirping at me a few times and i'd shut her down and then i did my setup i was like i'm, a, I'm probably the most pro anti-trump comic out there and then she just went no you're not you're racist and then i screamed like you know shut the fuck up which is like a musket that only works once you can scream shut the fuck at somebody one time yeah if it doesn't work after that then you have to get real defensive <laughs> or deflective and she just kept yelling one of my favorite shows when i was a kid was foster's home for imaginary friends there was this character named cheese and every time somebody got mad at cheese they would yell and he would get quieter and i learned that from cheese so she's yelling at me getting all worked up and i'm a clown I, it's my job to make fun of how ridiculous you look for being fun, yeah. for being mad at yeah. me yeah. for something that has nothing to do with anything. And I kept asking her, what are you mad at? I will apologize for it yeah. if you tell me. And she just wasn't. And I was funnier than she was drunk. And she started crying. And I called her Kamala Harris right when the security guard was kicking her out. And the comedy gods blessed me with her walking right in the frame and shedding one lone tear as soon as I called her Kamala Harris, like those old Native American commercials. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, I, I, after the show, she gets kicked out. Uh, she goes and meets my friend Jared Waters, and she's like, "Can you believe they kicked me out of the show?" And Jared was like, "Who yeah. who got you kicked out?" Like, I know it wasn't Troy, and she was like, "Yeah, it was Troy." And he was like, "You had to do something really bad to get to get Jordan, Troy kick yeah, you out." Yeah, yeah. And she was like, "He was like, listen." She explained the situation to him, and he's like, "If if it's bad as you say it is, Troy's definitely gonna post a clip of it." <laughs> and she was, and so they exchanged numbers, and she was like, "Send it to me when he does," and he sent it to her, and then she was like. I'll be honest, I wish you never sent this to me. And I'm guessing <laughs> hundreds of her friends sent it to her because that video got like 60 million on TikTok, yeah, that like 10 big, million on YouTube. Big, huge. Big. So like, I, and it was on like front page of public freak out on Reddit. <laughs> like she was, there's one, somebody I said there's one character on the internet, main character on the internet and you don't ever want to yeah, be yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And that poor woman got to be, and like she reached out and like I told my friend to like tell her she can come to any shows that she wants. I'm not mad at her. I honestly should buy her something very nice because yeah, she's a lot of good means. things for my career um, but she never reached out I don't blame her uh, but if you're listening to this Kamala you're welcome to come to any show especially if you've had a few drinks please let's put a die hard two on this puppy alright I'm ready to go franchise let's do this we'll make this a Tyler Perry thing let's go I will be racist if that'll get me more views I'm ready I have a whole blackface act planned out I call it the Sammy Davis Jr. the second I'm the candy Dude, man. That was my friend's goat. I went to Florida State and my friend had a pet goat and his name was Sammy Davis Jr. 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 <laughs> 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 All right, dude, I love it. Let's go to answer the internet. 
Answer the internet. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we got yeah, plug, you know, tickets, podcasts, yeah. all that shit. Tell the people. Troybondlive.com. Uh, I'm on the road right now. I'm every. I'm doing a lot of road stuff, um, and I would love to uh, have you out there. Um, I don't even know where I'm at. Tomorrow I'm going to Kansas City. Well, there's a lot of civil unrest out there, so that'll be fun. <laughs> um, but, Great place to be right now. Yeah. Right now. Oh, yeah. Dude, After wait, that, Flint, Michigan, and then Atlanta, Georgia. We, no. uh, I, I searched uh, your name. I was just like just Googling you. And yeah. Shit. And I went to one of these like, you know, silly celebrity sites. Oh, my God. Those are so this great. They said uh, <laughs> you are... I guess on their site, yes, you are the thirteen thousand one hundred and forty second most famous person. That's right. <laughs> you Better are the correct. number. You are the forty eighth most popular person jo- born on January seventeenth. The dad, you heard that? <laughs> you are the number four most popular person with the first name Troy. I will find the first three and kill them. I'm thinking the Troy Aikman, Aikman the Troy. city of. Just yeah. <laughs> uh, we, we looked. We looked up. It was Troy all baseball Aikman, players. Troy, yeah. Troy Percival and Troy Gloss are baseball players. But there was another Troy like entertainer. Oh, Palomalu. Troy Palomalu. I'm yeah. the fourth most. Aikman it was and, like, the Palomalu fourth most famous legit. Troy. And That's so cool. Yeah. You, might be the, I, you might be the third at this point. Like, yeah. Troy Gloss and Troy Percival were done. It's Palomalu. It's Aikman Palomalu Bond. Their time is up. Yeah. And then you it's have to the end of the day to change your name. Palomalu get the Head and Shoulders commercial. Yes. Yeah. Oh, it's going today. Thank God. I'm finally. Like cutting, cutting it? Yeah, because like I, I, cutting it, cutting I'm not. I'm, I'm gonna go like a little, little longer than I'm gonna. Tell, I'm gonna say, give me the Clancy. <laughs> yes, of course. He tells me everything I need to know about Charlie D'Amelio. <laughs> you are the number seventh most famous Capricorn comedian. I wonder who the other six are. Yeah, kill them too. Yeah. And the last thing here, you know, I don't know if this is real or or uh, right. like fake people yeah. as well. They're the second most famous last name Bond. First one, yeah, James. James, right? Yeah. But he's savings. Not real. Uh, that's what I mean. I don't know. Like, so I'm not, I'm not Barry? Sure. Well, that's Bonds. Bonds. Barry Bonds, yeah. yeah. Bonds. Well, uh, I will. But, so you got to work on a couple of these, you know, fucking. I like the one that says my Bond. net worth is a million. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. No, <laughs> that's look, great. Look, here we go. The uh, uh, Reese Matthew Bond is the number one. Oh, is he a wicked hot dude? No. no. I don't think so. Oh, no, no, no. Who's, oh, Jonathan Reese Myers is who I was thinking of. This that guy. dude's a rocket launcher. <laughs> <This guy. laughs> right. bro, 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 you straight up are more famous than this guy. Right. Actor who won a Joey Award for his role in the 2014 TV movie, The Unauthorized Saved by the Bell. He later booked the role oh, of that. Nick Radford in The Good Witch on the Hallmark Channel. He doesn't oh, yeah. have a racist heckler. No. Fucking yeah. yeah. He has a Joey. I have bond. a Joseph. Tell him to go fuck himself. <laughs> Reese Witherspoon Bond, whatever that is. Hell, his Most name is famous Bond. That's good to Period, know, dude. This is yeah, fuck so, him. Yeah. Hell yeah, <laughs> Troy Bond sixty nine. All socials, Troy Bond Live. Uh, dot com and uh, bonding podcast. Love it. Bro. That's what I got going on. Thanks for having me. Thanks. Bro. All right. Big thanks for watching. If you made it through this whole episode, that means you should be subscribed. There's so many of you out there who watch and don't subscribe. So make sure you are a KFC Radio subscriber. Make sure you get all the content when it drops. Click that button now. I have nine fingers. I'm still subscribed. It's that easy. <laughs>